We survived Jackson, Mississippi with another heroic fourth quarter performance by this Alabama State football team. But how much longer can we play like that? We'll focus on that later. Right now we're going to go up to Norfolk, Virginia. An interesting matchup for today's MEAC battle. We got the Delaware State Hornets in town to take on the Norfolk State Spartans. Delaware State is 63 right now. Norfolk State is two wins away from being bowl eligible for the first time in this series. So let's get it going. Here we go, late first half. And look at Blake Wilcox throwing this dot to East. What a catch in traffic by East. That was a magnificent catch right there. So as of right now, Norfolk State is up six to nothing, but Delaware State is driving on offense. So here we go with second and 11 situation. Blake Wilcox finds his guy. Brian Finnerty goes down the left side. Touchdown, Delaware State Hornets. And just like that, they're up one. Seven to six at the 44 yard touchdown pass. There goes Blake Wilcox on the pressure. This time he throws a pick. That's Danny Brown. And look at that juke move right there. Going down the left sideline and tackled around the 10 yard line. What a play there by Danny Browning. And the third turnover so far. This time, option play. Corey Harrison got that off, and Antoine Bailey finds the end zone for a Norfolk State touchdown. And the Spartans are back up in front. They went for two, they converted, and now the score is 14 to seven. Here goes Blake Wilcox once again. This time he's picked off once again. Xavier Simmons picks off the pass this time, and the Norfolk State Spartans are right outside the red zone once again. Third and six. Corey Harrison with the play fake as a quarterback keeper. He breaks the tackle, gets tackled inside the five yard line. Great run by Corey Harrison. First and goal now. The handoff to Antoine Bailey. Juke move, touchdown. Norfolk State is 21 to seven. Bailey gets into the end zone once again. It's third and three now. Blake Wilcox on the play fake. Throws off his back foot. It's deflected and picked off. Jeremiah Claret takes it back for a pick six. Another touchdown for Norfolk State. It's 28 to seven. That's the middle linebacker for the Spartans takes that back for a touchdown. A 35 now, another option play for the Spartans. Look at Corey Harrison with the fake pitch. He breaks a tackle and tackled at the 40 yard line looking like Vince Young from back in the day. So now we go to the fourth quarter, first and 10 situation. Blake Wilcox pops it and it's picked off again by Jeremiah Claret. Past the 50, inside the 40, and tackled at the 35 yard line. Six turnovers for this Norfolk State defense today. Jeremiah Claret is enjoying every single moment of this game. 28 to seven, 38 situation for the Spartans. This time, Corey Harris is looking downfield for his tight end, Jimmy Russ, and he goes in for a touchdown. 35 to seven, Norfolk State is up big. And we can't seal this game off without showing you this. Waiting for the punt is Patrick Peters. Out there looking like the white Patrick Peterson. He's past the 30, inside the 20, and high steps from the 10 inside the end zone. And the Spartans take this game with ease. A 42 to seven molly wop of the Delaware State Hornets. And now the Spartans are one game away from bowl eligibility. Now let's take a look at the stats. 50 to 26, we prevail over Jackson State. Southern beat Syracuse 27 to 24. Arkansas Pine Bluff beat Mississippi Valley State 28 to 14. Wow, that's a shocking loss right there for Mississippi Valley State considering how they've been looking so far this season. Florida A&M beat Grambling State 37 to 20. Wow. Florida State is one game away from bowl eligibility as well. So we need to keep a lookout for that. Meanwhile, over there at the MIAC, you saw Norfolk State take care of Delaware State to straight put hands on them like crazy. Tennessee State beat North Carolina a and in overtime, 36-29. And then Morgan State lose to Hampton, 31-14. And then finally, you have South Carolina State beating Howard, 27-7 for their fifth win of the season, meaning they are one win away from bowl eligibility. Can't wait to see how that turns out. So because of that win against Jackson State, we got another commit. From Pearl, Mississippi, Josh Jones is coming to town. Five foot 11, 
185 pounds and we definitely need him on our roster we need some more depth at the cornerback position with Cedric McNeil being gone as well as Jason Moore being gone after this season we need to start thinking about the future of the secondary he has poor potential and good discipline but yeah, I think somebody mentioned in the comment section on the previous video that that good discipline doesn't mean anything anymore. Because remember, Justin Chambers had A-plus discipline, and he still got suspended. So we got one more cat we're going after. It's another cornerback by the name of Brad Jones, and he comes from Titusville, Florida. He's set to make his official visit to Alabama State when we play the Grambling State Tigers. I really feel that if we win this game, He's going to sign on the dotted line because we're still battling Florida and Miami for him. If we can get him, we should be good at the cornerback position for at least another two, three years. Because we got Moore and McNeil leaving not too long from now. Brad Anderson will be gone. So that should be interesting. And then look at this now. Tony Swan commits to Virginia. He's going to be a Wahoo. And in retrospect, I shouldn't have been worried about the discipline part so much because they still get suspended. Scott Johnson, this is the one I regret even more. Six feet, 240 pound defensive end out of Tallahassee, a pipeline state, is going to Oklahoma. Man, that really sucks. That really does. He's going to the national champions. Look at that, a 4 5 6 40. We could have used that on our defense really badly. So here's the latest update of the BCS rankings. We're still number one. Nebraska is number two. So the way it stands now, if the season was over, we would be playing the Corn Huskers for the national championship game. But there's still plenty of football left to be played. We're still the number one team in the country at the beating uh, Jackson State. Meanwhile, you had Texas A&M who was ranked number one. They lost to Oklahoma and fell four spots to number six. Oregon State there at seven. Iowa at number 10, South Carolina at 9, and then Tennessee coming out that bio rate ranked number 10. The Miami Hurricanes are 11, Purdue was 12, dang, Purdue lost to Michigan State. And Michigan lost as well, they lost to Wisconsin. So as you see the top 25 polls, I must say that, wow, Florida lost to South Carolina. But anyway, I must say that despite the fact that we're struggling to beat these losing teams like Alabama A&M and Jackson State because they do have losing records I must say that this team does come up in the clutch when they need to last week when we played Jackson State we went into the fourth quarter we was only up by three points and then boom we go off and score 21 more points and we take care of Jackson State but I would like for us to play a complete game in the last game of the season which is senior day as we get ready to take on Grambling. So here goes the Heisman watch. Gene Speedy Singleton is still in first place. Holding on to that first place spot all season long right now. And we have to make sure we give our best player the football as much as we can. Thank goodness he's not injury prone. So here are the awards. Gene Speedy Singleton is up for the Maxwell Award. He's a finalist and in first place. And then you have Pedro Wilson the quarterback for the South Carolina Gamecocks, he's in second place, and he's having a phenomenal season. And then last but not least, you have Graham Miller, the running back out of Miami, who's also having a phenomenal season. 19 total touchdowns, as a matter of fact, and he's running that thing. So as of now, these are the finalists for the Maxwell Award for the nation's best offensive player. The Dope Walker Award, though. Gene is also in first place on that list. Followed by Graham Miller of Miami, as well as Muhammad for Michigan. Look at his stats, though. Over 300 yards are all-purpose yards. Oh, take that back. 3,000 yards and 32 touchdowns. Now, here's a first. Tim Brown is in first place right now and a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award, the Best Wide Receiver Award. We also got competition over here, though. He has 14 touchdown receptions. Now, unfortunately for Ken Taylor, he's out for the rest of the season, and he was having a great year. He had 12 touchdowns before he got injured and over 1,000 yards on 62 receptions. But unfortunately for him, he got hurt. So now, Tim Brown should have no problem winning this award, I hope. 
Last but not least, we got to look at Derek Carsey. He has 11 touchdown receptions, over 1,400 yards receiving on over 100 receptions. I'm surprised he's not in first place because that man right there is balling this season. And he has 48 helmet stickers. That's crazy. So here's a little HBCU roundup right here. You got Kelvin Brown from Southern. You got Patterson from Mississippi Valley State. And you got Pittman from Texas Southern who are finalists for the Best Office of Lineman Award. So it looks like Quentin Fitch just missed the cut. Right outside at number four for Florida A&M. He's having a great season too. And then Gene is in second place for the Best Return Award. But we got to beat out Oliver for Wisconsin for that. And then behind Gene, look who that is. Maurice Hearn from Texas Southern. He's having a great year too. On special teams and on the offensive side of the ball for the Tigers down there in Houston, Texas. And then finally you have Joseph Cooley who's in second place. Right behind the San Diego State coach for uh, Coach of the Year, which is surprising. We're 10-0, they're 9-1. We're on the verge of potentially playing for the national championship. So that's very surprising. So Jason Warren and Nick Carrington take home Offensive and Defensive Sweat Players of the Week. And Jason Warren went off with over 200 yards receiving against Grambling. Look at Carrington's stat line though, just crazy. Meanwhile, over there at the Miet, Brad Cantrell and Jeremiah Claret, rightfully so, went offensive, defensive Miet players of the week. Jeremiah went off too. He had two interceptions and one of them went back for a pick six. And big up to Cantrell for going off too. So as of now, the SWAT championship game is set. We already know that we're going to be playing Mississippi Valley State despite the fact that they lost this past week to Arkansas Pine Bluff. We're 7-0 in conference play, 10-0 overall. And we're looking to close this season out on a high positive note and impress the BCS voters. So join us next time for Senior Day. The Grambling State Tigers are coming to town at 3-6. That doesn't mean anything though. Remember, anything can happen in NCAA 06. We well, are playing on Heisman for crying out loud. But we're not going to let that stop us. We're going to do what we can to make sure we win this game convincingly. But join us for Senior Day. Peace.